All right, good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Bear with me as I'm still uh, got a cold, so I'll, I might lose my voice this morning. <coughs> but uh, two great announcements this morning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Number one, um, after I'm done with the book of Ephesians, starting January the 1st, we're going to go through the book of Revelation. Because I believe you need to know and catch you up on the end times of what's happening today and how prophecy is being fulfilled. First Sunday in January. Right. Yeah. The second great news is God bless us. Now we have a junior church. Now we have a youth leader. Yeah. Yes. Gary, Gary Franklin and his wife Bethany uh, are going to t take charge of the youth department. And, uh, yeah, the elders met and were 100% for it. And so uh, we're going to put it together and probably it will start in November. Do we have to get a plan, get it together, the program, and they're going to meet with John and with me and, and uh, the elders, and uh, we'll get together and plan all this. And so we're excited. Uh, I, uh, I'm very proud of my brother-in-law. I don't want to cry, but son-in-law, son I mean, yeah. Uh, is that who you are, all these? Uh, yeah, brother in Christ. There we go. I'm very proud of my son-in-law. He's a uh, uh, he's a man that loves the Lord. Amen. He's disciplined. Yes. His family's in order. Yes. He'll take this very seriously. And yet he has a good time. He's fun too. And uh, and so uh, he knows Thomaston. Yes. He was a teacher here in Thomaston. He knows the Thomaston area. He knows all the activity. He knows people. He taught basketball at the high school. He was the coach at Thomaston High School. And so uh, he knows the area very well. So I approached him and, uh, and they prayed about it and said they would love to do it. So praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're on a roll, people. So we give God the glory. You know, uh, I said it, it takes three to five years to build you got to have patience, okay? So this is exciting news, amen? amen? So tell your friends, the teenagers, tell your friends, and so it'll be in November we start. So that's exciting. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. So announcing that I start a new series in January is going to put me on the spot for Ephesians, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good, yeah. That's right. Never thought of that. In whom we also have ob obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ and whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is of the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for the house of God today. We even praise you, Lord, for the turnout. There are many that are working the fairs and the car shows today. And I pray that you'd use them for your glory as a witness, as they testify. And, and so we just thank you, Lord, that uh, we go into the harvest with the good news of Jesus Christ. And so, Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you would anoint the Word of God to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So for several Sunday mornings, we have been moving through Paul's astounding book of the book of Ephesians. In verses 3 through 6... We preached on Paul praises God for his sovereign work. And we saw in that sovereign work how he has blessed us from on high, how we have redemption, we have salvation, we've been adopted into the family of God, and we've also been accepted uh, by God. In verses 7 through 10, Paul praises God for his saving work. And we saw how God saved us with His grace, opened our eyes to our lost condition so that we could receive Jesus Christ as our, 
of, as our Savior, and He saved us by that amazing grace. And we saw last week that that amazing grace caused God much pleasure. God is a happy God when He sees people come to His Son, Jesus Christ. Today, I want us to notice uh, the place of God's sharing work. The place of God's sharing work. God's great gifts, His salvation, and His blessings cannot be found just anywhere. Paul reveals the location of the wonders of the Almighty. He tells us where God's blessings are found. Let's notice, first of all, God's blessings are found in a person. Did you catch that? In a person. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated. It says here in verse 11, in whom. The whom here refers to the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 10. In verse 10, everything begins and ends with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? There's nothing we've done. It's all Him that has done it all. And so God blesses us. God's blessings are found in a faith relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? I'll say it often. I'll say it a thousand times until Jesus takes me home. Receiving Christ into your heart means you have a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's a relationship. Amen. It's not a religion. Amen. Say it again. It's a relationship right. with Jesus Christ and not a religion. Amen. Religion will not get you anywhere. Okay, it's, it's repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Because mark it down, all religions sooner or later will not follow this book. The truth is where? Found in the scriptures, amen? And when a church deviates from the biblical doctrine of truth, then it's not a church at all. It's just a, it's just a social gathering, it's a social club. The day this church strays from this book is the day I resign and we'll plant another church. Faith in Jesus Christ and the truths in this book is very important. Everyone in the world, both saved and lost, enjoy some kind of God's blessings. They do. Air, water, food, life, the world. Those are all blessings from who? God. There's no question about that. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, He maketh the sun shine and rise on evil, on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Unsaved people as well as saved people get a smidge of blessing from God. It's a good thing. Because if God didn't do it, let's just say, for instance, God said today the world's not going to have any air. We're, we're gone. You can't breathe without air. Well, who provided the air? Who created the air? God did. That's a small blessing. You see, those are what's called in the Scripture common blessings. Common blessings. Those who come to Jesus by faith become partakers of God's best blessings. There's a difference. Big difference. You see, when we are saved, we are adopted into His family. Amen? Our sins are forgiven. We are promised a home in heaven. Our lives are changed. And we are made into what? New creatures in Christ. Praise the Lord for that. Our Heavenly Father promises us, promises us to abide with us. Amen? To supply our needs. To love us and to bless us. When we come to the Son of God, we are given everything that belongs to the Father. Amen? What blessings that is. And you know what? It's all found in a person. Look at Romans 8, 17. In Romans chapter 8, in verse number 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also glorify what? Be glorified together. See, we're joint heirs. We, we have all the inheritance of God the Father. Isn't that wonderful? 
That's a great blessing, people. And so we are giving everything. Having Jesus puts us into a place of blessing. So my question is to you this morning, are you in the Son of God? Amen? If you're in the Son of God, if you're born again by the Spirit of God, if you've been saved this morning, then you inherited all the blessings of the Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. You see, religion can't give you that. Amen. It can't give you that. Amen? Amen? Religion? I mean, a church body. Whether it's Baptist, Roman Catholic, Presbyterian, Lutheran, I don't care what the name brand is, but none of those churches can give you the blessings of the Heavenly Father. All of our blessings come in the Baptist church. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it all comes from where? God. From God, from the Father above. We give Him the glory. Amen? Yeah. All of our blessings is, comes from a place, and that place is found in a person. In whom, verse 11 says, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. They're also found in a plan. Also found in a plan. Paul says in verse 11, Paul says that we have been predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Oh, here we go. This is the scary verse. This is the one that causes all the fights in Christianity, this verse. Because of the word predestinated. Okay? I hope I can clear this word up for you this morning. When we hear the word predestinated, we automatically recoil from it. Don't recoil from it. Open your mind to yes. it. I thank God I've been predestinated this morning. Hallelujah. Listen, in our minds, we link predestination was sovereign election and we shrink away from that doctrine. Well you can shrink away from it all you want. It is still taught in scripture. You see this morning you would not believe the difficulties that have come my way just because I preach on election in verse number four and we did a while back. But just because we do not understand everything that election and predestination encompasses does not change the fact that it's still a true doctrine. Notice in verse 11 makes a clear statement about the sovereignty of God. It says that God worketh what? All things according to the counsel of His own will. You can't get around that. You mean to tell me, Pastor, God controls and owns me? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. The day you ask Christ into your heart. Bought and paid for, paid for amen, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. God can do His will in us, whatever He wants to do. Remember, Satan had our will a long time. Yeah. Notice here, worketh all things according to the counsel of his will. Either that verse means that God controls all things, even salvation, or it means nothing. It's that simple. It means nothing then. Either it is true or it's a lie. I prefer to believe that God knows what he's talking about. Amen? Amen. As Paul said in Romans 3, 4, let God be true and every man a liar. Now I'll admit to you, I have a doctrine in theology, big whoop. But even in that doctrine of theology, and I understand theology, and I love theology, <clears throat> predestination and election, I still can't figure it out. All I know is that one day Jesus came across my path. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And where the free will of man and the sovereignty of God meet, I don't know, but I know one thing. They do meet. Praise God. Praise God. Explain it, I can't. 
But I know I'm saved. Amen. 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 Well, I know when I get to heaven, I can say thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. The word predestinated here in this verse simply means appointed or destined. That's what the Greek word means. It refers to plans that God the Father made for His people sometime in the past. So the day you got saved, God has a what? He's worked out a plan for us. That's all that's teaching. Now that you're saved, now that you belong to me, guess what? I got a plan laid out for your life. Praise the Lord for that. It's a plan thing. You see, when we speak of election, we're talking about God choosing for salvation in eternity past, verse 4. When we speak of predestination, we are talking about God's determination that those who are saved will experience certain things. It's planned out. I like that. So, let's rephrase this. Election has to do with salvation. Predestination has to do with sanctification. Election has to do with cho God's choosing. Predestination has to do with God's changing us. Election has to do with eternity. Predestination has to do with time. God has a planned time for us. Amen? Amen? So in other words, you got saved, as long as we hook up to God and we're close with the Lord and we're in true fellowship with Him, He'll reveal us His what? Plan, and then we work it out. That's all predestination is. It's a workable plan. That's why it says in Philippians, remember Philippians chapter 2, He will do a work in us. He will perform, he said. Oh. So, Dora tells us we have no choice in the matter. As I've often said, I said Wednesday night that either you can have the plan of God the easy way or you can have it the difficult way. It's your choice. He says, God will get it done. I prefer to go the easy way. Amen. See, God predestined every event in our life of the child of God so that we will experience a changed life. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in what? Who? Christ. That we should be to be the praise of His glory. There's the change. There's the plan. So everything that we do in life as a born again believer ought to glorify who? God. When you keep that perspective, you're going to be all right. Now, that's a good thing to know. You know why? So, if you walk out here tomorrow and you're asking God for something, or, oh Lord, I, I think I want to go down this road, think of this. Well, going down that path, will that bring glory to God? If it doesn't, don't do it. Amen? See how simple that is? The devil likes to make it confusing. You see, an eternal life with Him is in the hereafter. Amen? Look at Psalm 37 for a minute. Well, that's somewhere in here. Psalm 37. Notice... Uh, Verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by who? Lord. And he delighteth in his what? Lord. Can't get around that. That's sovereignty. That's predestination. The good steps of a good man are ordered by us? Oh, by God. And if, and if we recognize that and walk in that order... Then he looks down and says, oh, I'm delighted in the way that believer's going. He delights in that. All God is saying is that we are headed, verse 11 and 12, somewhere on planet Earth. In other words, when God saved you, he's got a plan for you, and he doesn't want us to sit down and do nothing. Nothing. 
You see, while we are here, all the events of life are ordered by the Lord to make us more like who? Like Jesus. Look at Ephesians. Again, we get to chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse uh, 13, I believe it is. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, Till we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature and the fullness of who? Christ. Christ. See, we need to be more like Christ. Amen. See, God saved us to make us like Jesus. When we leave this world, God has predestined us to live with Him for eternity in His home in heaven, and that is biblical predestination. Then Paul goes on to tell us that God performs this predestination. Notice the verse, according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. See that word, nice little word, worketh there? That's a nice little word. It speaks of ongoing. It speaks of energetic activity. Hmm. It's a picture of, of a God who is actively, energetically involved in the assurance that we, that He will allow us to fulfill and work out our plan. See what I'm saying? God is enthusiastic. He gets all excited when he works a plan in us. Amen? Amen? And you want to get excited about that. If God is using you for something, get excited about it. Get energy. Amen? Amen. Don't walk around like you ate a ton of lemons. <laughs> get excited about Jesus. God is all excited about the plan he's got for you. Then you need to be excited about that plan. Amen? Amen? It's a picture of God who wants to get active in our life. Amen. Isn't that exciting that God not only saved us, He wants to get involved in our life. And He gets involved energetically. Yeah. So look out. Notice here the word counsel in that verse. That refers to God's determined purpose that cannot be changed. It cannot be changed. The word will here speaks of God's desires. Now talk about our desire. It's God's desire. So in other words, God desires that His people will obtain an eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus. So God orders every event in our lives to see that everything works out like He wants it to work out. Amen? Nothing is an accident in your life this morning. Amen? That's right. Nothing is. It's all planned by God. That's right. Every event. He uses every event. God is pulling all the strings of life. He is manipulating every event. He is behind every blessing. He is behind every tragedy. All the events serve to accomplish what? His will and His plan in our lives. And some of those events, we don't get it, but we'll get it later on. Amen? Amen. Let me give you an example. When our daughter caught cancer at three and a half years old, and she wasn't, she wasn't going to live, and we had to go through all these programs and to make a long story short, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand. I even went home one, uh, one night and just spent the night in prayer and said, God, I don't understand this. Why didn't you give it to me? She's only three and a half years old. I don't get this. And I said, if you don't do something, she's going to die. But I didn't know at that time, being a young pastor and immature, you know, I'm getting there. You know, and I, as a matter of fact, I was kind of angry. I was very angry. I was angry at God. I told him so. He, he knew my heart. I was just say it like it was. And God just said, gave me, yeah. God, as soon as I got done, the Holy Spirit reminded me, didn't you say when your children were born you gave them back to me? Amen. 
Yeah. Ouch. To make a long story short, see, that was part of God's plan to make Kathy and I more like Jesus Christ. If you ask us today, during those times, God was so real and so close. We never experienced God like we never did before. But I said, what was your plan, Lord? Ha, I didn't know it at the time. You know what the plan was for my life? See, I was one of those uh, legalist pastors, you know? Ultra separatist. We didn't, you know, if you didn't cross the T's and dot the I's like me, you weren't saved. You know what I experienced through that? I had people from different denominations that came by our bedside and prayed. Where are my Baptist friends? One. Within a 50, 60 mile radius, I was in the Baptist Bible Fellowship at that time. Not one of those pastors visited me. Oh, we love you. But where are you? We could have used the comfort and the help. You know who visited me? The non-denominational yeah. people. Yeah. You know what God was telling me? You're so stinking near and mighty. You think that nobody else is, can be saved. No, no other denomination can be, have faith in Christ. And God began to break down my legalism. I never would have saw that without this tragedy entering my life. And I said, thank you, Lord. Yeah, wow, there are other believers out there that love Jesus Christ that are not Baptists. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I began to get our church out of legalism. From that point on. Thank God for that. I never would have saw it. So, see, that was his plan. And it took that to wake me up. And you want to know story. She's fine. That's, that's, that's my son-in-law's wife. God took care of it all. And she's good today. And so praise the Lord. But see, God takes us. All that was planned by who? God. You see, being a part of God's eternal plan is the only way to enjoy the best of His blessings. My question to you this morning, are you part of His plan? Notice thirdly, they're also found in, in His pleasure, verse 11. Notice the Bible says that God does these things after the counsel of His own will or His desires, verse 12. And then verse 14 says, and to the praise of His what? Glory. Paul is telling us that all the blessings we enjoy in Jesus Christ, whether they be heavenly or earthly in nature, come to us through the heart of God who takes delight in the blessing of His people. He is good to us simply because He wants to be. Amen? He blesses us because it brings Him pleasure. As I've stated before, I do not comprehend how God could receive pleasure from saving the likes of me. I don't know how He got found pleasure in that. But He did. I praise His name that He put me in His plan before the foundation of the world. I glorify Him that He saved me and continues to bless me in spite of my foolish ways. Amen? Amen. Some of the stupidest stuff we do as Christians, and yet, yet you see God bless us anyway. Why? He takes pleasure in it. He takes pleasure in it. I say this morning, Hallelujah! I, I bless his name this morning that he loved me when I was a sinner and that he saved me. I praise his name this morning. He put me into the plan before the foundation of the world. I praise the Lord this morning for all things that enters my life because I know whatever he brings into my life is going to give him glory and it pleases him. Amen? Amen. See, the problem half the time is that we try to please ourselves before we try to please God. So whatever enters your life this morning, praise God for it. Accept it. God's just part of God's plan, amen? I won't mention name, but we, but we have a member here 
that, that, that's gone, that is now going through tremendous things that happened to him in his body. But when you talk to that person, you know what comes out of his mouth? Praise God! That person has accepted what God has put in his life. Amen? Amen. What a great attitude. Part of, part of the plan. And if you don't talk to that person, he could tell you stories that God has done in his life that's beyond explaining. Keeps on praising God. That's what it's all about, amen? amen. Where the blessings, the place the blessings come from? In Christ. Man, I'm not going to finish this this morning. But I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. Notice, notice here, verse 12. Having told us where the blessings originate, Paul now tells us something about the purpose of God's saving work. What's the purpose behind this? These verses in verse 12 tell us, first of all, to reveal His glory through us, verse 12, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in who? Christ. In other words, God saved us to reveal His glory through us to a lost world. When the world sees the saint of God, they see a living, breathing testament to God's saving power. Amen? In other words, you that are born again this morning, the lost look at us and say, Wow, that's a living, breathing relationship with God. Wow, that's a powerful testimony. Later in his book, in Ephesians 2.10, he says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has foreordained that we should walk in them. The word workmanship here means a work of that which is made. The English, we get our English word poem from that. Poem. It refers to an artist's masterwork, the crowning creation of all his ability and talents. Do you see what God is saying here? In other words, God points to those He has redeemed by His grace. He says that we represent the pinnacle of His power. In other words, God is saying, look at those born-again believers. That is my artistry. That is my perfect tapestry. Look at them and you'll know me. Amen. Did you know you, we are an artwork? Yes. Yeah, isn't that exciting? When, <laughs> when the world reads our lies, what do they learn? That's the question this morning. Amen? Do they learn that Jesus Christ changes every life he touches? Or do they learn that he makes no real difference in the lives of men? When Paul uses the word trusted in that verse, it is in a tense that suggests an ongoing trust. Ongoing trust that alters the life of the one trusting. It's a once and for all trust that changes the life of the person. That change will manifest itself in a new life in a continual desire to love, to serve, and to live for God. Amen? In other words, the child of God may not be perfect, and we're not, but the child of God will be different, and it will show until the day they leave this world. Amen? Amen. We're not perfect, but at least the world can see that we're consistently trying to live what kind of a different life. Amen? And that's what they need to see. When they read us, they should see, they should see people that are different. They should see people who are spirit-filled, who live every minute under the direction of Almighty God. Amen? Amen? That's where we should be. They should see a people who walk different than they do, who talk different than they do, who look different than they do, who do different things than they do. Amen? Yes. I want to tell you something. God gets insulted a lot when born-again believers say they're born again and they go into the world and they act and do everything that the world does. That's an insult to God. You're not telling the world you're different. We have to be different, amen? 
Now, I didn't say pious. We need to be different. In other words, if, oh, if an unsaved person comes up to you and says, Hey, come on with me. We're going to do this. And if it's something against God's Word, then you simply say what? No, no thanks. I'm a different person. I'm a new creature in Christ. I don't do those things anymore. That's what glorifies God. Amen? Because if you don't, people, you know what's going to happen? The day you try to witness to them, they're going to say, Oh, you're a Christian? You've got to be kidding me. You'll fail. That's why it's exciting to get into God's plan. Let Him get energetic with you. Get excited and serve the Lord. Amen? Hey, is it that difficult to serve the Lord? Is serving the Lord that unhappy? No, it's a joy, amen? amen? To reveal His glory through us, to reveal His gifts to us in verse 11. We have obtained what in verse 11? An inheritance. An inheritance. That refers to something assigned to another, a heritage. Everyone here has a heritage, amen? Whether it's good or bad, you have a heritage. Whether it's good or evil, you have a heritage. We have a wonderful heritage with God, amen? amen. In heaven. <clears throat> How do I know it's wonderful? Well, does not God promise us peace? Love, yep. grace, yep. wisdom, yep. eternal life, joy, Amen. victory, strength, yep. guidance, power, yep. mercy, yep. forgiveness, righteousness, truth, fellowship with Him, spiritual discernment, and countless other good things God has given us. It's a wonderful inheritance. Amen? Yep. Just think before you guys weren't saved, you had none of this. God's so good, isn't He? We have a great blessing in Christ Jesus. I like 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Let me read it to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. Reserved where? In heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto, unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. An inheritance incorruptible, undefiled. Where? Reserved where? Yes. In heaven. Wow! Do you know what that tells me? You can work all you want here on planet Earth. You can have the best car, best house, and a second law of thermodynamics will get you every time. It's going to rust. It's going to get old. And you're going to have to, it's going to have to be what? Repaired. But not the house in heaven. Incorruptible. It, yeah, I can't wait to get to that house in heaven. Amen? Yeah, amen. John 14 says he's got a mansion for us. Praise God, I don't have to take care of that mansion. And it's all taken care of by Jesus. Amen? Amen. Every day, we live in this world. And God demonstrates one of His purposes as He has blessed us here. Then when this life is over, we'll go to be with Him in His heaven where we will enjoy His presence and the place that He's prepared for us. Amen? Amen. I would just remind you that Romans 8, 17 says that we're heirs. This means that He will not receive His inheritance apart from us. The Lord's future is glory is wrapped up in his church and we will be given our inheritance together in heaven what a day that's going to be amen what a day so let, so walk out of here this morning if you're not saved this morning as the invitation is given one of our elders will take out a bible and show you how to be saved this morning christian Everything we have is in Jesus Christ. So for His glory, for His honor, and for His praise. Amen? Amen. 
And there is a inheritance waiting for us. In closing, look at John 14. In John chapter 14, it says, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many, what? Mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Awesome. Woo! What a day that's going to be. Amen? Amen. Praise God today that He saved us, sanctified us, blesses us. Amen? Amen. Has a plan for us. Yes. And it's all for His glory. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Bless the invitation, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.